Assalamualaikum. Welcome to Islam Explained. We have Dr. Zuleha Keskin joining us today. Uh, we'll be talking about women's rights in Islam. So, Dr. Zuleha Keskin, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to have academics like yourself joining us. Now, if we were to ask uh, the question, does uh, Islam oppress women? What uh, would you say to that? That's a good question, and it's a question that uh, I get asked often, and we see a lot of discussion around it. If I was to say in one sentence, Islam does not oppress women. Um, maybe some Muslims oppress women, but Islam in itself does not. So um, and this discussion can go bigger. We do see that there are women's rights issues globally. It's not just a Muslim issue. I mean, here in Australia, domestic violence is a big problem. We have nearly one woman die from domestic violence per week. When we say here, is it uh, Australia? In Australia, about? yeah. And, it, and each country has its statistics. But basically, we have problems globally in the way women are treated. The, the hashtag MeToo uh, initiative in itself was demonstrating that there are problems in the way women are treated. So I guess my point is that um, women's rights is a global problem uh, and it affects people of all faiths and all cultures. So uh, I guess the Muslim community is not exempt from this. Uh, the Muslim community does have problems as well. I will acknowledge that, but I would also argue that Islam is not the problem, the cause of those problems. So why is there so many misconceptions about um, with the women in Islam, um, and the way they get treated? Yeah, uh, and I guess there are mistreated women, and I would say that there are three main reasons why we're seeing the problems that we are, um, or the way it's perceived as well. Uh, the first one is education. There's there is really. Um, I guess a lack of education in particularly third world Muslim countries um, and when you look at the literacy rate of those countries it is quite low um, and with this uh, other problems kick in because it's about what he says and what she says and what you know our leader wants us to do so there's not really much of a you know looking into inquiring to what does the Quran say what does the Hadith say what did our Prophet peace be upon him do in different scenarios so these these therefore trigger uh, I guess huge problems, Edu lack of education and not only affects women but as we know it affects uh, other factors uh, as in you know those who are disabled get affected, um, those who do not have a status in society get affected but definitely women are also affected with lack of education. Is uh, it the woman that's lack of education but the, or, or their partners and the society? I would say both, yeah. both. Women, I guess when women are not educated they submit to what they are, what they encounter more easily, because they cannot challenge it. Um, where so, the lack of education of women is a problem, but also the lack of education of men. At the end of the day, both men and women make up society. Mm. So, if men are not educated and if they're not advocating for the rights of women as well, it's going to cause problems. Um, and the reality is, almost all societies are patriarchal, so the men do have a great influence in what women can do and what they can't do. Um, and again, this is across the globe. It's uh, it's not just a uh, Muslim issue. So that's the first one, the education. The yep. second one is culture. And this comes hand in hand with education to a large degree. Um, there are some societies, Muslim communities, where culture is definitely overriding Islamic practices or Islamic teachings. And this, again, becomes to the detriment of women, um, and sometimes to the men as well, something like arranged marriages or forced marriages where, you know, if two parties do not um, have a say in who they marry, you know, there are, this is a strong cultural practice in some countries, um, and this is violating the rights of uh, women in this case, and men. So culture can be a huge detriment to women's mm. rights. And I think the biggest challenge in this is that sometimes Societies don't even know they're following a cultural practice. They may sometimes even assume that it is an Islamic practice, uh, like female genital mutilation. So when that happens, it just becomes very embedded in society um, and very difficult to overcome. And also for them to distinguish what is religious or what is religion and what is culture as well. They can't distinguish between the two. And again, we refer back to education, lack of knowledge. Precisely, because when, if their education is there, they could analyze certain cultural practices and think, wait a minute, you know, this it wasn't done like this during our Prophet's time, or this violates the, you know, what the Quran says about women. Whereas, so when that knowledge is not there, those questionings don't happen and those cultures become just very immersed in everyday life. 
um, and almost become part and parcel of religious life, uh, which becomes quite dangerous um, for society, I would say. So, um, and I would say the third reason why there is this misconception of uh, women, uh, women's rights being violated or, or being oppressed by uh, Islam or Muslims is the media. Um, you know, when we see events and news in the media about Muslim women, you know, which countries come to our mind? It's usually, you know, Afghanistan or, you know, sometimes Pakistan or Saudi Arabia. You, you don't hear stories of women in Indonesia, Malaysia, where I would say that women are quite enjoying the rights given to them by Islam uh, much better than, say, in Afghanistan, which is a third world country. It's been going through war for decades. Mm. Um, and so, you know, the infrastructure of society has collapsed. So it's the way that, you know, the media portrays these incidents has a lot to do with the way, I think, wider society understands the role of Muslim women mm. as well. Uh, you hear, of, you know, a Muslim women being, you know, bashed to death or an 11-year-old girl being, you know, married to an older man. Um, whereas, you know, again, we have societal problems with all faiths, with all cultures, um, but they do get handpicked and get portrayed by the media. Um, and there's this assumption then that it must be okay, Islam must be okay with this if these Muslims are doing it. Yeah. Whereas we know that a lot of Muslims would condemn that I sort of I guess when we look at some a news like that, it, it sort of gets their attention, it gets the world's attention. Yeah. And that's what they want. They want uh, people to sort of be following you know, what they're publishing out there. So something different. Absolutely. Even though it's not the common practice or what uh, the religion actually portrays. Um, they're trying to portray it as, as what they um, yeah, show. That's yeah, right. So. The media works on sensationalism. At the end of the day, it's, it's a business, it's an industry that needs to survive. And unfortunately, it comes at a cost, which means that you know, a lot of things get sensationalized, which leads to stereotyping, <clears throat> generalizing. And you know, this isn't just exclusive to Muslims as well. Other segments of society also, um, I guess, are the target of the media, if I can put it that way. Um, and and therefore we get a lot of I guess societal um, sort of uh, instability as a result of this because there's wrong information that's going out there. Just to wrap it up, um, what sort of emphasis does a religion put towards women then? I think the key thing about Islam is it, it focuses on the spiritual component of the individuals, um, and and it, within Islam, both men and women can spiritually elevate to very high levels. Um, and there is a hadith that says the criteria for right, uh, superiority is righteousness. So basically that means that if a female is more righteous, she can be more superior to a male. So I think we need to focus on this spiritual component. At the end of the day, the pr pr practices and the teachings and the principles of Islam apply to both males and females. So it's not a male or a female status being higher in religion? Absolutely. They could both be at um, high levels if they try to That's achieve. Right. And when we look at throughout history, we see both men and women who have been celebrated for their greatness spiritually and with their leadership, um, and that's been celebrated. So uh, you know, it's, Islam gives both genders the opportunity to thrive, to grow, and to have a real leadership within their spiritual, um, I guess, component and element, and their knowledge with their scholarship. And if we had more time, I'd probably go into the history um, before the Prophet had come and how women had been treated, but maybe on another occasion. Um, I'd like to thank you for uh, explaining all that um, on the program. So thank you, Dr. Zuleha. Um, I'd like to thank our viewers as well for tuning in to Islam Explained, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.